Hi everyone, this is Chris with Easy Photo Scan. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the settings for your Kodak PS50 photo scanner. Now, this video only applies if you're using the Kodak Picture Saver Scanning System software. If not, then unfortunately these settings really won't apply. So, let's go ahead and begin. In the Kodak Picture Saving Scanning software, when you start it up, you will uh, you'll come to this order number page. And then you'll see right here that there's a red star next to the order number field. In the order number field, you need to enter something in order to be able to continue into the settings and batch scan page area. So, uh, so you can enter anything. You can enter names, numbers. The only thing you can't enter are dashes, slashes, or any kind of symbols. So in this particular instance, I'm going to go ahead and type in settings. You can type in whatever you'd like. Once I type in settings and click on continue, it'll open the picture saving scanning system software batch scan page. You'll know that by the, uh, the batch scan button popping up right there. Now, we're going to go right directly into the settings page. Once again, this is for the Kodak PS50 photo scanner. The PS80 photo scanner, on the other hand, has somewhat of a different settings page, and we'll cover that in a different video. Now, the settings that you have within the Kodak PS50 photo scanner and the Kodak Picture Saver Scanning System software are as follows. You can scan as color or grayscale. Quite truthfully, I would recommend keeping your setting at color even for black and white photos. You'll get a better dynamic between the whites, grays, and blacks if you use colors compared to the grayscale, and which point you would only get about eight bits of information or colors. So scan as color or grayscale. Down here, you have the batch scan mode. And as you'll see in the batch scan mode, you'll have the opportunity to be able to scan the front side, back side, or both sides. It's a duplex scanner, so you can scan the front and back side at the same time. If your photos have writing on them, this is a great moment to be able to go ahead and select two-sided scanning. If, on the other hand, your photos don't have any writing on them, then I would suggest clicking on front side. Next, below the batch scan mode, you have the transport timeout. Now, what this is, is, is the number of seconds in between each scan before the photo scanner basically stop scanning. So it comes default at three seconds. I would personally recommend giving yourself between eight to 10 seconds, just to be on the safe side. If you want more, you can click on the drop down and go all the way up to 20 seconds. But do understand that that means it'll take 20 seconds before the scanner stops scanning once you scan your last picture. So usually eight to 10 seconds is a good area to be in. Right below that is the flatbed scan mode. As you can see in this particular instance, it is in fact grayed out because I don't have the photo selector dongle plugged in. But if, you're, if you have the PS50 uh, photo scanner bundle with the legal flatbed accessory and the photo selector software, then this is where you would go to enable the photo selector software. You would just simply click on that. And every time you use the flatbed at that point, it'll call up the photo selector software. Next, you have resolution. You have the option of scanning at 300 DPI, 600 DPI, and as you'll see, it's listed here at 1200 DPI. Just to let you know, with the Kodak PS50 photo scanner on its own, you can scan technically 1200 DPI as well. But what that'll be is it's not going to be 1200 DPI optical or a true 1200 DPI scan. Instead, it'll be what's called interpolated which is, I believe, about four times as many pixels in a 600 DPI scan. So if you want to scan at 1200 DPI and have a true 1200 DPI optical scan, then you'll need to have the Kodak legal flatbed or A3 flatbed attachment accessory attached to, the, uh, to your computer in order to be able to get a true 1200 DPI scan. Otherwise, out of the PS50, you'll be able to scan at 300 DPI or 600 DPI, so it's your choice. Next, we have compression. You have best and superior. Now, as you can see, as I highlighted over, as I put the cursor over the best compression, it says the highest compression, good quality. Now, what that means is, is that it's the normal JPEG compression that you would normally find in a JPEG file. If you want a little bit 
larger but better file and let and you know limit your compression I should say um, then you can click on the superior and as you can see by highlighting on the superior compression it shows highest quality least compression so you have best and superior on the compression next you have sharpen images you have the option of clicking on none for no sharpening low for low sharpen setting or high for the high sharpen setting up here you have another option called output media now what that means is that after you scan you have the ability through the Kodak picture saver scanning system software to either burn a CD DVD or if you have access to them Kodak picture CDs you can select any of the above if you'd like for the program to prompt you every time you're finished scanning to burn your photos through the Kodak Picture Saver scanning system software to either a CD or DVD, then just simply select either CD, DVD, or once again, Kodak Picture, system, uh, Picture CD if you have them, and then simply click on Prompt for Media. By clicking on Prompt for Media, that will prompt you every time you're finished scanning to burn your photos. If you don't want that prompt to come up, just simply uncheck that. Next, we have crop border. As you'll see, you have two options for cropping. You have the normal crop setting and aggressive crop setting. Just to kind of explain a little bit about what each is. In the normal crop setting, it'll automatically detect and crop the image borders. In normal setting, basically what happens is that pictures aren't always cut straight on the top or the bottom. Depending on how the cutter is when the pictures are printed, there may be a slight crooked edge on the top or the bottom of the photo, or possibly even on the sides of the photos. In the normal crop border setting, your Kodak Picture Saver scanning system software will scan the photo and apply the crop to the photo so it'll be the proper size of 4 by 6, 5 by 7, 8 by 10, or in between. And if there's a crooked edge around the top, or the bottom or on the sides, the software will also detect that crooked edge and in the normal setting, apply a small black area up in that crooked setting or up in that crooked area of the photo to be able to compensate for that crooked cut. Now, if you don't want to have that black area in the photo, then you can just simply click on aggressive. The aggressive setting quite literally crops in on every edge of the photo by three pixels. And if you don't want that crooked edge filled in with like a little bit of a black area for the border or such, then you can select aggressive crop. And that aggressive crop, once again, will only crop in on three pixels on every edge, but it'll give you a nice tight looking crop. It's not enough to actually cut into the image, but it's enough to be able to eliminate those crooked edges. So you have normal and aggressive. With that, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now we're ready to scan. We do have a, one more option here. On the batch scan page, as you'll see, you'll see image cleaner tool. If you check that on, basically what that does is it'll go through and it reduces the lines and images caused by dust particles. If you want to, uh, to have that on to eliminate dust particles or lines, then have that checked on. It doesn't slow your scanning process at all. Or if you don't want it on, just simply uncheck it. So those are your basic options. You'll see also here, I've got the flatbed icon. Currently, as I hover my cursor over the flatbed icon, you'll see that it just remains an arrow. If I have my flatbed plugged in and turn on properly at the right time, then that arrow will then turn into a hand and allow me to select the flatbed scan icon. So then I can select that and scan with my flatbed. Now, a real quick note. If you do, in fact, have the Kodak PS50 photo scanner along with the legal flatbed photos, uh, the legal flatbed uh, flatbed accessory, <laughs> and or the Kodak A3 flatbed accessory, and you'd like to be able to use either of the flatbeds that you may have, then make sure that you have your Kodak PS50 photo scanner plugged in and turned on, along with the Kodak PS50 dongle plugged into the computer and the legal flatbed or the A3 flatbed plugged in and turned on with the, into the computer. Make sure that both pieces of hardware are turned on, the PS50 along with 
the legal flatbed or the A3 flatbed, whichever you may have, before starting the software. If, on the other hand, you start the software and decide that you'd like to be able to use the flatbed and then turn it on while the software is engaged, unfortunately, the software will not recognize the flatbed, so you won't be able to use it. So at which point, all you have to do then is just exit out of the Kodak Picture Saver Scanning System software, turn on the flatbed, make sure you have a steady green light on both your PS50 and the flatbed, and then restart the software. At that point in time, the software will then recognize the flatbed, and then you'll be able to use it easily. So those are your basic settings there for the Kodak PS50 photo scanner and with the Kodak Picture Saver Scanning System software. Hopefully that helps you to get started in scanning. If you have any further questions, by all means, call one of our experts at Easy Photo Scan. You can reach us at 1-800-739-6919, extension 1. Happy scanning, and we look forward to hearing back from you. Thanks. Bye-bye.